Hello everyone. My name is Hayley Lorimer. I'm Director of Membership at the FMB and you're all very welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. So um, I do just want to say before we start, if you've been out on site today, I hope you haven't been burnt to a crisp and I hope you're remembering to stay hydrated and use some sun cream because the building industry does have very high rates of skin cancer. So please look after yourself when you're out on site in this kind of weather. Right. So nagging over for, for this afternoon. Um, today we're joined by Ros Thorpe and Joe Bennett from the Chartered Institute of Building, the CIOB, who are going to talk about routes into becoming uh, a CIOB member. And we're also going to hear from Gary Olson, who's an FMB member from South London, who um, is London Region President and is also has those MCIOB letters after his name. So he's going to talk about the benefits to him and his business from going through that process. So FMB and CIOB do work together in various ways because we share similar aims and values around, um, you know, in advancing the building sector and improving standards across the construction industry. So I was just saying um, to the, the team earlier that um, if we see MCIOB on a membership application, we regard that as a positive sign and we still do all our checks and vetting and everything that we would normally do, but we do see it as a plus point if a member also has that MCIOB letters after their name as well. So before we get started, this webinar is going to take about 45 minutes or so to get through. Um, if you have any questions as we go through the session, if you hover your mouse at the bottom of the screen, you will see there's a Q&A box down there. You can just type your question into there. And there's no such thing as a daft question. Please remember that. If you're thinking of a query, somebody else will probably be thinking of it too. So type it in there um, and we'll deal with the questions as a group at the end of the session. You will receive a follow-up email after the webinar, probably tomorrow, which will have a link to the recording and copies of the slides and any other information that we might refer to going through the webinar today. So you don't have to note everything down as we go through unless you want to. So I think that's all the housekeeping from me. But before we start, I'm just going to launch a poll which um, will ask you to answer the following question. It's about what gets in the way of you achieving MCIOB status. So you've got um, a, a variety of different options there. You can choose as many as apply. Uh, I'll just leave that up there for a minute or two to see how people respond to that. And then that will give uh, Ros and Joe in particular a bit of a steer as to where our audience are with all of this. So it seems like everybody who's answered it already has MCIOB. So they may be interested, Ros, in FCIOB, perhaps. OK, I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. So there's a few more answers coming in about the time commitment, the cost commitment. And that's about it. So I think we'll leave it there because everybody has answered. And yeah, I don't know whether Ros and Joe, can you see those answers on your screen? No. So. Um, there's a couple of people saying they can have concerns about the time that it would take away from other commitments like business and family. A couple of people saying they're not sure that it would be worth that the level of commitment, I'm not sure about how much it would cost. And then there are some other people saying nothing's getting in the way. They're already MCIOB or working towards it. So that's the responses from that. Thank you very much for completing that. So I'm going to take that off the screen and I'm going to hand over to Ros and Joe for their presentation. OK. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Ros Thorpe. I'm a Director of Education and Standards at the Chartered Institute of Building. Uh, I've worked there about 14 years. Prior to that, had a long uh, teaching career. And I'm just going to ask Jo to introduce herself um, with a few words. Go yeah, ahead, Jo. Thanks, Ros. Um, I'm Jo Bennett. I'm Senior Training and Development Manager at the CIOB. Um, I think I've been at the CIOB approaching seven years, I think, in September. Um, time has flown by 
<laughs> um, but that's a good thing because I, I thoroughly enjoy my, my time at the CIOB. Um, I do look after um, a number of different routes, pathways to chartered membership, and also I manage the fellowship process as well. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the programmes I'm particularly involved with um, as we go through the presentation. Um, I'm just going to mute myself because my dog is barking. Uh, I, I apologise for that. He's now in the garden and my window's open. So apologies. I'll mute and I'm just going to hand back to you, Ros, for the first couple of slides. Thank you. I just I don't know whether, Gary, you want to say a few words about yourself or does everyone know you, Gary? Well, I hope not. If they do know me, they might send me on Crime Watch or something like that. Um, yeah, hello, I'm Gary Olson. Um, I'm an FNB member. I'm a member of the London Board, and I've been the president of the London Board for a while. Um, as a company, and personally, we're quite involved with what the FNB do, and so we're sort of very much invested in how being a, um, a master builder company is a good idea. Um, I'm a chartered builder, and I have been for a couple of years now. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, and now we're going to start our presentation. We are going to be talking about pathways to membership. And when we say membership, we've got a number of grades. So we will be talking quite a bit about fellowship. Um, but it's quite useful for you to know uh, how um, your perhaps colleagues or people who work for you, how they could join as a tech member or as a, um, as a chartered member. So who are we? We are the Chartered Institute of Building uh, and we've been around a, a very long time, since 1834, um, and we stand for the science and practice of built environments across the world. Everything we do is to improve the quality of life for those using and creating the built environment. So it's about thinking about the quality of life of our end users and of our, the people we employ in our industry. We are set up for public benefit. So everything we do has to be uh, through that lens of public benefit. And as I said, we were set up in 1834, uh, the same year as Reba. So the RIBA was set up in that year as well by, by a group of master builders. Thank you. Uh, what is membership? Well, um, our MCIOB qualification is comparable to a British bachelor degree, uh, but it is important to note that you don't need a degree. And I think Gary will talk a bit about his vocational route into chartered membership, um, but it is independently benchmarked at that level. Uh, FCIOB is again comparable to master's degree level, although um, you don't need a master's degree to become an FCIOB. Again, there are completely vocational routes to that. So we keep the thing as practical as we can, but we do ensure that our standards are externally benchmarked. So when you take on um, the professional review uh, or the fellowship, uh, you will be asked at the end whether you would like to use the term chartered construction manager or chartered builder. So we hold those two titles. We have about 47,000 members uh, worldwide. 20% uh, of those are overseas, mostly uh, in China, Hong Kong, Middle East, uh, and some uh, English speaking countries, uh, South Africa, Australia, etc. Uh, membership is um, a professional qualification. So, although we say it, it shows that you have been qualified to degree level, it's really about your competences and your commitment to um, a code of, of professional conduct. So it a, makes a positive change in our industry for public benefit to have well-qualified, competent and ethical practitioners in our membership. Mm -hmm. So our members do help shape a lot of the work we do. So they, whether that's a government policy or around professional standards and advancing the science and practice of our industry, which is part of our Royal Ch Charter. We are a very inclusive institute. There's a pathway to membership for anyone and everyone who wants to pursue 
um, either management or leadership career in the built environment. So we have routes for very, ex um, very experienced professionals people um, who perhaps don't hold qualifications and we've got routes for graduates and we're going to talk about those different routes today. So if we could just move on to the next slide. This is our structure. So about 65%, perhaps a bit more, 66% are chartered of our 47,000 members. Um, so they will be either FCIOB or MCIOB. Uh, then we've just opened a new grade called Tech CIOB, and that is designed for technical specialists in our industry. Uh, that's only just opened, so has currently only nine members. <laughs> it just opened this week. Then we have an applicant grade, which is where you join the CIOB before you pass your assessment to be chartered. So it's a holding grade. And then, of course, we want to ex, uh, extend our influence to future leaders in our industry, to students and uh, learners. So we have a student grade, especially for those. So that's our structure. To talk a bit about um, chartered membership, we've already said it is benchmarked at degree level. Um, being a chartered member gives you access to our knowledge hub and our uh, CPD um, resources and networking events and CPD events and conferences, etc. It will create trust in you from your employer, peers and clients. People will uh, understand that you are an ethical and competent practitioner. Our members tell us that they uh, they receive um, increases in salary and uh, career opportunities, uh, enhancements and uh, promotions when they become a member. And you will belong to a, a respected network of industry professionals. And we are quite a broad church at the Chartered Institute of Building. So you could be working in uh, specialist areas, in design, you could be working in um, on-site uh, production, you could be working in facilities management, similarly you could be working in um, refurbishment or demolition, we have a really broad church of members. Um, and you get full access to our library and information service, which includes technical information sheets, best practice guides, et cetera. They're all very practical hands-on um, materials to help you improve your practice. We just move on. I think I'm handing over to you, Jo. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, trying to move on and unmute myself there. Um, and apologies if I've got this, uh, us, uh, pictures of us in the corner. I don't know if that's covering. Is that covering the words? I, I'm not sorry. Not not okay with them. No, the words are clear. Good. Okay. Um. So yep. So we do also have our chartered fellowship grade um, of membership, which is the highest um, accreditation that we offer at the CIOB. Um, this uh, fellowship grade has been independently benchmark uh, at a level seven, which is comparable to a British master's degree qualification. Um, it's a grade that is suitable for industry leaders um, with more than five years of experience with leading people, leading organisations, and also um, sort of showing leadership within the sector. Um, fellows of the CIB are recognised globally for their skills and their achievements. We do not ask or look at any qualifications for candidates that are applying for fellowship. So you do not need to have um, a degree level qualification or any uh, qualification at all to apply for our fellowship grade of membership. All we really look for is or ask for is five years sort of senior managerial experience for the fellowship. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to have any qualifications to apply. I will talk a little bit more about the fellowship on a later slide, but there are two routes to fellowship. 
there is an upgrade route for those of you that are already chartered members. You can apply as an upgrade to fellow fellowship or we offer the fellowship to direct entrants or non-members. Non-members can apply directly for our fellowship grade of membership. Sorry, thank you. Can you move? Thank you. Uh, this is our new grade, our Tech CIOB grade. And as I did say, this is for technical specialists working in the built environment. Um, some, some specialists are very senior. So we get people called technical director and uh, we'd ask those to apply for direct fellowship or upgrade to fellowship. It's, tech CIOB is not for them. Generally, these people will have a sort of um, a level three, which is an A-level type qualification. It obviously won't be an A-level. It'll be an MVQ or, or a technical qualification. And they tend to be more of the hands-on people in the industry. So to entry to becoming a technical member is focused on meeting a set of competencies and behaviors. So again, it still very much demonstrates your competencies and your commitment to ethical practice. And it reflects the highest level of technical excellence. In addition, tech CIOB members gain exactly the same access to all of our benefits, our member benefits. So that's our new tech CIOB grade. We don't expect it to be for you, but you may have people working for you uh, or with you that you think this would be uh, a suitable grade for. So we're now going into the pathways to membership. Uh, um, we'll give a bit more detail on the, the actual pathways and uh, we include the fellowship in this as well. So if you want to move the slide on, and I'll hand over to you, Jo. Yeah, thanks, Ros. Um, yep, so our direct to fellow pathway, um, as I've said, there are sort of two routes to fellowship. There is a direct route for non-members to apply, and there is an upgrade route for those of you that are already sat in the MCIOB grade of membership. Our direct to fellowship pathway is designed to support industry leaders to become prestigious chartered fellows of the CIOB. This pathway is for those who have been leading an organization or people and contributing to the industry. We have um, themes. We have themes at the fellowship level and uh, there are four themes. These themes are leading people, leading organizations, leading the sector, and we have uh, leadership behaviors, which is those um, sort of ethical uh, competencies. These themes sort of split down into what we call standards or competencies that we, you need to show how you have met these standards or competencies within your written application forms. So we are looking for candidates that have at least five years, quite senior experience within the industry. So again, yep, you can complete this pathway and graduate as a chartered fellow. Uh, we it can be done within three months, so it can be quite a quick process. Um, I would estimate probably more likely three to six months. Uh, six months is quite, quite realistic, it's quite doable. So the, the application process um, starts with an eligibility form. So you self-assess yourself against uh, standards or competencies. It's quite a quick, quite easy form to complete. And we will then, uh, once we've received your, your eligibility form, uh, we'll discuss your suitability for the next stage in the process, which is a workshop. So you will be invited to attend a workshop if you are suitable for, for fellowship. Workshops are quite lengthy. Uh, Ros and I have done one this morning. They last about three hours. And we give very in-depth information about the whole fellowship process. So the application form, 
through to what we call a Viva Voci exam. Okay, so following that workshop, you will go on to write your application, a written application, which is based on a project or initiative that you have led. Once you've passed the written application, you will go into the final stage of the fellowship process, which is attending a, a sort of peer review or Viva Voci exam, as we call it. Um, the Viva, it's, it's quite enjoyable. It has two stages. Stage one of the Viva is questions and answers from two assessors who have marked your written application, just trying to elicit a more evaluative response from you. So open questions asking you to uh, explain or evaluate or expand upon something that you have written in your application. Then the last stage of the Viva is a sort of more think on your feet exercise where you are given or presented with a choice of four questions and you select one question that you want to answer and you have a discussion with the panel on your chosen question. Okay, so that's the process. It's an eligibility form, a workshop, a written application and a Viva Voci exam. So you do need to have more than five years experience, um, sort of as a strategic director or senior manager to apply for fellowship. And it is a lot around leading people and contributing to the industry and how it sort of explaining how you can, um, how, how you do that within your day jobs, your day responsibilities. Moving on to um, a pathway called Qualified and Experienced Practitioner Pathway. This pathway is our professional review application, which I think the majority of our members will have gone through the professional review route. The pathway is created to streamline the process for members who are ready to achieve chartered membership. We do have some criteria to apply for the professional review. You need to have a uh, level six qualification and you need to have been working in the industry for at least three years three years with a construction related degree or five years if you have a non built environment degree non construction related degree. So you've got to have years of experience in the industry and you must hold a level six qualification. You can then uh, apply for our professional review and there is actually three different professional review applications. One is an industry route, or industry application, which the majority of our candidates will complete. But we also have an academic qualification for those academics in the industry. And we have a shortened uh, um, professional review for those of you that hold a level seven, uh, MV, sorry, uh, an MVQ level seven in a built environment subject. So for an MVQ, um, I think there are certain criteria within the MVQ. I think it has to have been completed within the last three years and it needs to have been signed by a, an assessor who is a CIOB member, chartered member. So if you hold a level seven and it's been assessed from a, a CIOB member, chartered member, and it is, has been assessed within the last three years, you may be eligible for a condensed, shortened version of the professional review. So there are three different application forms for our professional review um, process. We then have a experience practitioner pathway, which we call uh, the Chartered Membership Programme. So we do appreciate that there are people in the industry that do not hold a level six qualification. And we've created a pathway that's tailored specifically for them to support those members to achieve chartership and to reduce the required time 
from five to three years. Through this pathway, we will support you through two steps to achieve chartered membership. The first step is to complete the CMP, the Chartered Membership Programme. And then the final stage, once you have completed the Chartered Membership Programme and the exam, will, you will be uh, then moved on to complete the Professional Review Application Form. Now the CMP is provider taught. It's taught by a list of training providers. Um, who are all CIAB approved providers. It's a nine month taught program and it is followed by an exam, an open book exam. The CMP falls under um, four sort of modules. It's taught, there's four taught modules within the CMP. That's a uh, construction built environment, management, health safety uh, and the environment, health safety and welfare, and then construction technology. There are uh, the sort of four modules that are taught by our providers. And then you will sit an open book exam at the end of the program, which is a 12 day open book exam. And you will be asked to um, answer questions based on those four modules. There's a choice of questions. So you have two questions per module and you only have to answer one of those questions, one of those two questions per module. The whole program um, is taught with uh, a specific set of drawings uh, and a scenario of which you will have a visualization also of the, uh, of the building and all your answers need to be in relation to those drawings and scenario that was set. Now there are two, um, Two starting points to the to the program. You can start in September or you can start in March. And you would either be working towards a June exam or a November exam. So there are two starting points in the program and two exams within the year. So once you've passed the exam, you are then eligible to complete our professional review application, which is that last step uh, in gaining your chartered membership. You don't have to have any formal uh, qualifications at all. Um, we don't ask for any qualifications for the CMP. Uh, it might be that you have an HND or an HNC qualification, um, but it's not necessary for the chartered membership. You do, however, need to have over three years of management experience uh, to, to do the chartered membership programme. Average time is about three years because it's a nine month taught programme followed by uh, an open book exam followed by the professional review application. It doesn't have to be three years. You could do it um, shorter, shorter period of time than that. That's probably about average um, for most of our candidates doing the CMP. I think I'm handing over to you for this one, Ros. I think we're going to bring Gary in, aren't we? Sorry, Gary. Yes. Go back to that slide and bring Apologies. Gary in. Mm. I have that written down on my sheet as well. I'm so sorry, Gary. It's OK. You're forgiven. Um, thanks, Joan Ross. So, yeah, so I will sort of pick up some of Joe's points really in, in a journey that I undertook. So uh, myself and, and my co-director, Andre, we did it together, which probably was a bit easier, I think, for us. And if you can work with someone else, I think it helps you to kind of bounce off each other. Um, but we, we don't have the necessary post-school qualifications. So we went through the Chartered Membership Programme that, that Joe has sort of outlined. Um, and we did it with a guy called Steve Payne, who's an external provider. Um, Steve had a similar background to a lot of us in many ways, because he started out as a, as a chippy and then he became a site manager and he became a contracts manager before he then stepped into academia. So he was ideal for someone like me because I, he understood me. I understood him. Um, so I don't have a degree. I qualified to proceed based on the management experience I had. Same applies to Andre. Um, we had a bit of a concern that we wouldn't be the suitable candidates, you know, but Steve pointed out that people with our background, you're not in silos like you are if you work in a large organisation where you just do one thing pretty well. You know, if you're an SME owner, and I guess most of us on the call are that, you have to kind of know a lot about everything. And that, that sort of experience is the foundation of, 
of what you go through when you do the CMP because you're constantly referring back to that knowledge and skill set in this scenario that Joe's talking about. So our scenario was a, a late Victorian house that had been fire damaged and someone had stolen the lead from the roof and you know blah 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 and you have to kind of look at all those different clues they're giving you and try to understand actually what it is you might be asked about it. Um, time scale, um, we started looking at the course in November 2019 and we took the exam in November 2020. Um, Steve took us through those four different modules that Joe was describing, and we had to do a mock paper at the end of the, each module. And we had the choice of two questions, again, that Joe mentions for the open book exam. So we did the exam, got match fit, as Steve described us, um, took the exam and got our pass marks in February 21. Um, next stage then was the professional review. Joe describes it as an application form. I just want to let everybody know it's not quite just an application form. It's actually quite a bit more involved than that. But nonetheless, you know, it's 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 manageable if you've got the experience and the knowledge to fall back on. Because what the questions they ask you are, what have you done in a similar scenario about this? And it might talk about health and safety, or it might talk about doing something outside your day job or something like that. And Steve he sort of took us through it you know we challenged our answers and made us better until we felt we we're at the point then that could be submitted so we passed that some admin happened um and then we were sent sent a letter to say congratulations do you want to be a charter builder or a chartered construction manager we both chose chartered builders because we're the heads of our, head of our organizations i imagine if you're in the larger construction industry you might prefer Child construction manager. I don't think it matters. So that's pretty much what we did. So I think we did it quicker than most people by the sounds of things, probably realistically 18 months from, from start to finish, something like that. Did you go to a graduation event, Gary? Yes, we did. So Tell we, us about that. Well, it was fantastic, actually. So we went to the first um, group of graduation uh, ceremonies after the COVID. Can people remember COVID, that funny thing that happened? And um, it was great. So it was a, a city livery company in London. I think they elsewhere in the country as well, but obviously being London based, we went there and we got to put the gowns on and they'll be suited and booted. And we'll go and stand up in front of our peers, other people getting MCIOB, a few clever people getting FCIOB at the beginning, a couple of people having chartered building companies. Um, you know, we made the most of it, you know, went with our families and when they had a celebratory drink and a meal afterwards and yeah it was it was fantastic and you know posted on linkedin and you know any other social media as well just so we can kind of boast about our achievements but um i will say speaking personally that i feel very proud of the achievement that i've done particularly because i haven't you know i've got a degree i didn't go to university you know so started construction we left school learned stuff over the years and 35 years after I left school, I started getting a professional qualification. And I think it's been great for me. I've really enjoyed doing it and I'm, I'm happy to have it. Excellent. You should be very proud. It's a, it's a great achievement, Gary. And we know a lot of people are our industry don't go the degree route. They like to do a, a practical hands-on route and uh, you've achieved a, a degree level qualification. So well done. Thank you. Shall we move on? Yeah, I'm now going to talk a bit about um, Chartered Environmentalist Qualification, which um, maybe we can interest Stephen Gary in doing this one too. Um, so this qualification is awarded by the Society for the Environment, who are uh, the chartered body for environmentalists. Uh, and they license this out, so a lot of professional bodies will deliver this um, in their particular context. So, uh, for example, you, you could be a chartered environmentalist and work in IT, or you could be a chartered, chartered environmentalist and work in construction. So when we deliver this qualification, it's all about construction. So it's, a, again, another professional qualification that demonstrates your environmental competences and, again, your commitment to ethical practice. It's widely recognised in the industry, but also 
recognized across other industries. So if you were in a position where you wanted to move into a different industry, this would be a qualification that's widely recognized there as well. And recognized as best practice. So um, it, you'll get access to learning and development materials in the discipline. And uh, the only entry requirement for the chartered environmentalists is for you to be a chartered member of CIOB. So that's our chartered environmentalist qualification. I think I'm doing this one. Am I Joe or is this one yours? Oh, it's PDP, isn't it? It's probably yours. I'm lost with the slides now. So am I. I think it, that one is PDP. <laughs> yeah, so this is the structured pathway for or skills development um, pathway, also known as the professional development program. And this program is for graduates that are new to the industry. So this might not be relevant to you, but if you do have any graduates that you employ, or if you're working, you know, um, with with it might be people within your teams um, that are new to the industry, then this would be the route for them. It's a nice little program, the professional development program. Uh, it's very very structured, and it is a program as opposed to a written application form. Um, it's quite lengthy or it can be quite lengthy. It can take anywhere between rough average 18 months to two years, but it is good because it is for those graduates that are very, very new to the industry and have less than three years industry experience. So they can come straight out of university and into work for the first time, and they can go straight onto our PDP. They don't have to have any experience at all they can join the professional development program. It is a very good, it, it aligns quite nicely with other graduate programs that companies have in place. So you may not have a graduate program in place, which um, is absolutely fine, but the professional development program sort of does very much align with a lot of graduate programs. So it is a very good program to put your graduates on. Um, It is quite similar to our professional review application. Um, it does align to our professional review. Where within the professional review application, candidates need to talk about their skills and their competencies and how they meet specific criteria. In the professional development program, they actually need to show how they do that with evidence. So it's an evidence based program. We use a system called Learning Assistant, which is an e-portfolio system where candidates have the opportunity to upload work based evidence to show how they meet specific assessment criteria. So it's a little bit like an MVQ uh, qualification whereby you sort of create a portfolio of evidence. It's the same. Um, what, I, I sort of call them units. I call them units, PDP units. Um, the professional review doesn't call it units, but there are 12 sort of, we call them units within the professional development programme. Things like planning and organising work, things like communication, things like decision making. There's things around health and safety. There's things around finance. It's quite broad, the PDP and the, the professional review. But the difference with the PDP is it you do have to show that evidence. You provide the evidence of your learning um, through what you do within your work. So everything candidates do and produce within their work, they can upload and use as evidence within their professional development program. It's designed to be very flexible. You know, candidates can move from one project to another project and the PDP can just move with them. OK, so that's absolutely fine. Um, it moves the candidate sort of the time frame, you know, they can be chartered within less than two years, they can be chartered within 18 months, which is very, very quick for graduates straight out of university to then become a chartered member with the CIOB within 18 months or two years. It's, it's very, very quick. 
There's no exam to the PDP. Okay, so everything is assessed from uh, an assessor through an assessor. That can be someone in house or it can be an independent assessor. And everything is also verified by a CIOB approved um, uh, verifier. So everything's assessed, everything is verified. At the end of the program, the candidate will uh, gain MCIOB, will be given MCIOB. So no interview, no professional review at the end. Um, it's just nice. They go through the program at their own speed, you know, so which is lovely as well for them. Criteria, they do have to have uh, an honours degree level, level six uh, qualification or equivalent, or they can be working towards a level six qualification. So we do take on part-time students. We will accept part-time students onto the PDP. So they could be doing their degree and working, uh, doing a degree part-time and working, and that's fine. So they're working towards that degree and they can start the PDP. We also can take on placement year students on the professional development programme. So it could be, and we do get a couple of um, candidates every year who are working on a placement year, taking a year out of university. In that placement year, they can start the PDP. They can then go back to university, complete their degree, go back into the workplace once they have graduated and pick up with the PDP where they left off. Okay. so. It's, it's a nice program to follow. Yes, yeah, kind of like a, a, a formalised mentoring program that gives people confidence and builds their, their skills over a, a slightly longer time frame. Would you call it that, Joe? Mm -hmm. And for smaller companies, it's, it's difficult to set something like that up. So it can be easy just to pick this up and use it as a mentoring program for your your, your graduates? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it sounds like quite a lengthy programme, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I, you know, if you've got some motivated candidates, graduates that are, you know, actively sort of uploading work into the portfolio, it can be completed within six months. You know, that, that's the quickest um, turnaround I've had uh, on the PDP. Um, those that, you know, because we're not pushing them as such, uh, it can take a little bit longer. So, you know, if you've got a motivated candidate and graduate, they can get it done quite quickly, which is great. But just, you know, imagine out of university, 18 months, you're, you're a chartered member. Um, it's, um, that's really, really good to have. Okay, I'll, um, I'll move us on. I'll let you uh, do the tech grade. Yeah. Um, this is a new grade called Tech CIOB. So if you do have technician type specialists working for you, this may be for them. I'll pass quickly over this because I see we're, we're um, getting up to the 45 minutes and we'll spend a bit more time talking about the fellowship and things. Um, so it, it's just been introduced. The post nominals are Tech CIOB. So we received those last year from the Privy Council. As I said, we uh, formally launched this grade uh, on Monday this week. Uh, we've got nine members so far uh, who were part of a pilot. Um, so most people who come through this grade won't have a degree because if, if people have a degree or a level six MVQ or a level seven MVQ, they're going to be much more suited to uh, chartered membership. Um, so they might have a BTEC, a level four. Uh, level four is like first year of a degree or a level three, which is kind of a level and that could be an MVQ of some description. So if you're in a technical role, if perhaps site supervision or site, site manager or something along those lines, um, this might be the right grade for those people. Can you, oh, good. Um, so we're coming towards the end, I think, of our uh, webinar. Um, this is just a slide that shows the various activities. So um, we, we do have a mentoring, formal mentoring program uh, that's not the PDP. So it's for very experienced people who want to apply for the professional review. And it's just 
helping them fill in that form. And Gary alluded it, to it earlier. Gary had mentoring through his provider, which is excellent. It's not an easy form to fill in on your own. It's always good to have a mentor. And that mentoring program is online, supported by fully qualified and trained mentors who are chartered members and is absolutely free. So we also uh, produce a lot of research and reports. We've just uh, put out a, a, a safety critical items guide, which is free to anyone anywhere in the world. So I do advise you to, to have a look at that. Uh, we do guides to best practice in project management and design management, all sorts of other things. And we do research and reports, and that's usually part of our policy area where we're trying to de develop our policy positioning. So we, we will ask the industry for their thoughts on, for example, skills gaps or building safety, um, the Building Safety Act, etc. Um, and of course, we have our own academy, which offers training in all sorts of different areas, and they do offer um, qualifications as well. So they've got qualifications in fire safety, uh, in site management, building safety, uh, and they do offer the chartered membership program as well. So move on the slide if you could. So this is the last one. So after this, we, we're very happy to take some questions, but if you want to find out more, I've just put the telephone number of the customer services there and the customer services email, or you can look us up on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, if you like that sort of thing, or just go to the website. So thank you very much. I think that's all from Joe and myself, unless we have questions, Hayley. Brilliant. Thanks, Rose. So um, just to remind people, we'll send that information out with the follow-up email as well, so everyone will get that. We don't have any questions in the Q&A box, but if anybody wants to pop anything in there, please do. Um, I've just got a quick closing poll. Oh, I was going to say, Gary, was there anything else you wanted to add? or Joe, before I launch this poll to just close the session? Yeah, just a couple of things for me, Hayley. Um, mm. I think one, one of the drivers for us to sort of become chartered is, is what we believe is sometimes an unfair public perception of, of builders, particularly builders in, in the sector we're in, RMI and you know, domestic works. And I've had people say, oh, you're just a builder, you know, which I try not to let it grind my gears, but it does a little bit. And I think... More and more people these days, if they're looking to um, hire people, they 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 seek comfort from professional qualifications. And I think also that's something that being a chartered builder, I think it, it does change people's perception in you. You know, I've had this conversation plenty of time. And I said, I'm a chartered builder. Oh, really? All of a sudden, it it, it means something to, to people. So I think I think that's something that that. Um, yeah, I think it's quite important. Um, and the other thing I would say is that the CMP course changed the way I think a bit. So obviously there was technical things that I, that I learned from it that I didn't know before, but also it, it made me change how I sort of considered risk. You know, one of the things that we were taught is, you know, maybe actually rather than all the risk sitting with you, the building contractor, and probably everybody on this call can probably tell a few stories around that, where JCT contracts or someone sit all the risk with you. Actually, we were taught to find a way that actually we could necessarily defray the risk onto other people, different forms of contract. And it was all, all knowledge, all information. It was all kind of enriching to what we do, you know, day to day, you know, as sort of building contractors. Mm, brilliant. Thanks, Gary. I, I have a, a view that I think, in a way, university education is kind of wasted on the young. I didn't go to university after school either. I did an open university when I was in my 30s, I suppose, and had a young family. And I, I firmly believe that I got more out of the education at that stage in my life than I would have if I'd gone to university at age 18. So, Because you've got practical things to apply the knowledge to as well. I think it's really, really beneficial. But uh, we do have a question, which I will pose to all three of you. Um, 
Paul is asking, he has a degree in mechanical engineering and a postgraduate electrical engineering diploma. Would this be regarded as relevant to membership? Yeah, um, it certainly would. Um, as I said earlier, we are a very broad church, so we do have a very black and white view of what is a built environment uh, qualification, a relevant one. And that view is it's not history, biology, religious education. <laughs> it's got something to do with construction. So uh, a degree in mechanical engineering, although you might when you did your degree you might be looking at perhaps manufacturing or something. It doesn't matter once that's person has, who has that degree moves into a construction role, it becomes a relevant construction qualification. And, and certainly the postgrad in electrical engineering is relevant to what we do. But um, I don't know if Joe, you might want to talk a bit about what people with other degrees, because um, we, we are open to people with degrees in, um, you know, in uh, history, biology and religious education that I talked about earlier. Do you, do you want to yeah, talk a bit about that? Yeah, we, we sort of have this terminology cognate or non-cognate um, degrees. Um, anyone can do the PDP, the Professional Development Programme, doesn't have to be a construction related degree. Um, so you could have come out of university, as Ross says, with a history degree or a geography degree and gone into construction afterwards, you know, completely changed uh, what you wanted to do and gone down into the construction route. And that's fine for the for the PDP. Um, there are some minute um, sort of things with a co uh, non cognate degree with PDP. Um, we can't charter you until you have uh, completed um, three years industry experience. So you could do the PDP and you could complete the PDP in 18 months, but we would have to hold off for a further 18 months before we can officially charter you. That's the only difference. Um, otherwise, you can go straight onto the professional development program with a non-cognate degree. So any degree um, is, is absolutely fine for the PDP. Okay, we've got a similar question here from Tobias who says he's got uh, an ND, I'm not sure what that is, and an HNC in the built environment. He'd been running his own building company for 18 years. Which pathway would be the best option for him? And he also comments that what Gary said earlier about wanting to improve the image of builders is, is why he wants to try and get chartered. And that, I guess uh, yeah. that's why people join the FMB as well, because all, all of this is about combating and improving the image of the industry. As it a whole, is. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that all organisations need to work together collaboratively to do that. And I do know what the HNC is. I'm not sure about ND, but um, no, me neither. Yeah, HNC is 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 um, a, a good qualification. So if. Um, who is this, Paul, is it? Tobias. Tobias. If Tobias felt. Ah, says it's a national diploma. The end. Oh, national diploma. Yeah. Thank OK, you. if Tobias <laughs> felt that he could meet the fellowship competencies. I certainly think Tobias should do the um, the eligibility form to have a look at it and think, could he meet the, the, the fellowship competencies? Because Tobias could apply directly to be a fellow, doesn't need to apply for membership. But if he looked at the fellowship competencies and thought, oh, this is all too much, then I think he should do what Gary has done, exactly the same thing that Gary has done, and perhaps talk to Gary about the experience and um, get some tips. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I'll I'll find uh, Tobias's email after the session mm -hmm. and maybe put him in touch with Gary if that's okay. Yeah. So um, I guess we should leave it there for now. Um, I wanted to ask about the eligibility form that you've mentioned a few times for the FCIOB. I assume that people can just find that on your website, can they? It's not. Um, you, can't, you can't download it from the website. You can right. complete it through the website. So you can, you can find it, you can look at it, you can submit it through the website to us, or I have a hard copy that I can email over to you, um, which I can do, Hayley, that's fine. Perfect. Yeah, should, 
Should Thank we put you. the link in the chat before we mm. sign off? Yeah, that'd be good. Or oh, email the link to me and I'll share it with the members afterwards. Okay, do right. that. I'm just going to uh, launch this second poll before we close so that I don't forget to do it, which is a short one. And it's just asking, now that everyone's heard a bit more about CIOB, FCIOB or MCIOB, has their opinion changed? So I'm going to leave that there for a minute. I, I'm aware that a couple of people have left us who had to obviously had to dash off for various things. But hey, can got... I just sort of jump in with one thing? Of course. One of, your, one of your original questions was how long, how much time do you have to commit to doing it? Yeah. So, um, as I said earlier, we did over an 18 months period. The kind of learning bit was probably over um, about six or seven months, I would say. And I, it was every two months, there was a Saturday morning on a webinar chat with Steve and the rest of the cohort. Yeah. And then I probably spent every other Sunday, but not all of it. So there is a commitment. You know, I've got a family. Obviously, a lot of the people on the calls have got families and they've got to work around it. But Andre and I both did it around our our kind of business life. Um, the period that that took a chunk out of the working time was the exam. You know, that's, you know, Steve always advised us to try and clear the decks as much as you can, which may not always be that easy. But, you know, just to give people the full disclosure, you know, we kind of, we got through it. We survived, I think. So um, it is typically is the twelve day period is difficult. There's no doubt about it. But um, I think the rest of it is probably manageable for for the majority of people time wise. Brilliant. Thanks, Gary. It is useful to have a realistic uh, idea of how much time is actually going to be needed to get through sorry. the process. So, um, Joe, you're still sharing your screen. I oh, know. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, We'll all be reading your email. I didn't mean to do that. I don't want that. <laughs> I did just want to add, I've clicked on that link. You can't access the eligibility form unless you log into the CIOB website. Okay. Unless you log into the portal, you can't access that, that eligibility through that link. So I will email the eligibility form to you as well, Hayley. All right, perfect. Thank you. So I think we've achieved the objective because I'm sharing the results of the poll, which says uh, the couple of people who've, who've completed it are either definitely going ahead with MCIOB or FCIOB and or thinking more likely to be something that they could achieve. So I think that was the objective of the session was to get that message across really, wasn't it? That it is achievable for people. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I just, I see that Paul has just raised his hand. So I'm gonna see uh, if I can find out why. I can't actually, I, could, <laughs> I can't see a, a question or anything from Paul, but he's raised his hand. So I'm wondering if I can actually allow Paul to speak. The technology might allow us to do that. Paul, are, are you there? Can you speak so that we can tell if I am right. working? Hurrah, technology <laughs> works. Brilliant. Hi, Paul. I had a question for Gary. Now that he's a member, <clears throat> how often has he accessed um, the Chartered Institute for advice or information. So, yeah, just just an open question because I've obviously used FMB resources every now and then, and you, it's kind of a bit like a parachute. You never know what you need until you need it. Um, <laughs> and so, it's just, that, there's a question to Gary. You're on mute, Gary. Yeah, sorry, school wearer. Um, yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, probably don't use it as much as I should. What what I do get quite a lot of benefit from is um, you get on the construction manager mailing list and we get a construction management email five days a week. And on that, it's like a sort of wide variety of, of different um, articles that you can click on to and, and have a look at. And I find I get quite a lot from that. So there'll be certain things that I won't necessarily read about from professional interest point of view so if there's a new station in china i might read it because i'm a bit nerdy and i like that stuff but there'll be other stuff that you i read and i find it really interesting so past couple of days there's been a case of of um fraud in northern ireland but in the construction industry so i find that interesting or you know you read about sort of health and safety infractions where the company might have been um, prosecuted so you think well that's all a bit negative but the upside of it you might read some other stuff that will give you some technical guidance. Um, 
Also, Design Wiki is a really useful resource that you, you get easy access to. And I find that is a really good technical um, uh, library that I dip into every now and again if I don't really understand a certain thing. So I might hear a particular phrase and I think, hmm, what does that mean? And I can dip into that and understand it. And then it gives me a broader understanding of whatever the principle or, or concept I'm trying to get my head around. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming in to speak there, Paul. I didn't actually know I could do that. Okay, that was great. <laughs> um, I think we'd better leave it there because we've been going for an hour now. We said 45 minutes, but whilst ever people are still on the call and there's questions still coming in, it, you know, it's good to keep going. So we'll leave do, it there. Do forward on questions to us, um, Hayley, and we'll, yeah. we'll answer them. Brilliant. So if you get any questions, just drop us an email and we'll answer them. Sure, we know where you are. That's great. So it just remains for me to thank all of our speakers today. So Ros, Gary, Joe, um, thank you very much for speaking at the webinar today. And thank you to everybody for attending. Um, I see Matthew's also said thanks, guys, to everybody as well. So that's great. The next FMB webinar is next week on Tuesday the 20th. And we've got a QS called Martin Trimble coming to speak about pricing for profit. We've already got loads of bookings for that webinar. So if you're... Um, looking to brush up your pricing skills, which I know is a big issue at the moment with ever increasing materials and uh, labor costs, then that's not one to miss. So hopefully we'll see a lot of you there. Um, and thank you to everybody for attending. Take care and have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.